Researchers can identify conservatives and liberals by scanning their brains. Liberal brain activity indicates more empathy. Now to the protests erupting coast to coast over conditions at those migrant detention centers. The outrage this morning growing. While conservatives have larger amygdalas focused on detecting threats. Build that wall! Build that wall! Could our brains explain our reactions to Trump's racism? It's a I racist think, thing to tell a black think, or a brown person to go back to a country no, they came it is from. Ra- no. How much does our biology shape our views? Studies have found surprising answers and even identified the best words to bridge the gap. Political polarization has been rising for decades. Increasing numbers see the other side as a national threat and don't want to talk to them or live among them. A striking number would be unhappy if a family member married someone from the wrong party. How much of this is the sorting of similar brains? A study followed thousands of twins, some with similar genes and some with identical genes. Any differences that emerged between the two groups of twins would likely be down to biology. The study estimated that 30 to 40% of our political leanings are genetic. We used to think that after childhood, the brain did not, really could not change. And it turns out that nothing could be farther from the truth. Every time, you learn a new fact or skill, you change your brain. So people who read Braille, they have larger hand sensory areas in their brain than those of us who don't. One theory is that conservative brains evolved to defend territory from attack and disease, while liberal brains were explorers. You know what I am? I'm a nationalist, okay? An experiment tracked people's eyes as they looked at an array of images. Conservatives focused on threatening or disgusting images, while liberals had a stronger response to flowers and rabbits. When shown ambiguous expressions, conservatives perceive more threatening emotion. When you looked at that bridge loaded up with people, that's called an invasion of our country. In another experiment, people watched colored beans fly past on a screen. They didn't know if clicking the beans would win or lose them money. Democrat brains clicked on more beans and lost more money as a result. They have an appetite for information and they see strangers as an opportunity, while conservatives see more of a threat. Build that wall! Build that wall! An early community of conservative brains would stagnate and starve, while liberal brains might meet their end at a magic mushroom cliff diving party. There are tantalizing indications that gene variants may drive social participation at both ends of the spectrum, encouraging collaboration. Knowing that our differences are partly based in biology may make them easier to tolerate. We might be more aware of manipulation. Neuroscientist Bobby Azarian says racism is a failure of the more rational prefrontal cortex to control the impulsive amygdala. And Trump is betting on the amygdalas. They are it's serving this country. They were elected to serve it's America. Very simple. They are American you, citizens. You, I said make this room for someone who wants such to be. Listen, argument. I got a news flash for both of you. <laughs> this is what this election is going to be about. When the president said, yeah, we got a plan for health care, but I'm going to give it to you after the election. He was telling you the truth. The internet doesn't help. Echo chambers create a march to the extremes, encouraged by subversive forces. It's estimated that 30% of active Facebook accounts are fake, designed to look and act like the people they want to influence. Their goals are to sow division or to attract clicks through divisive content. One study paid people to follow bots that retweeted people from other parties. This actually increased polarization. 
Mixing offline is a moderating force, but social networks flip this trend. In the hostile online environment, the messages needed more careful tuning. One experiment found an effective approach. Three groups were given articles about the environment. One article explained that we are causing real harm to the environment. Another spoke of keeping our water and skies pure and described pollution as disgusting. And a control group were given a non-political article. Liberals already supported environmental policies, so the articles made little difference. But conservatives were more supportive of policies to protect the environment if they had read the Moral Purity article. They were also more likely to say that they believed in global warming, even though it wasn't mentioned in the article. If you want to convince someone speak to their underlying values. Liberals prioritize equality and care, while conservatives focus more on loyalty, authority, and purity. When Trump talks of invasion and infestation, he appeals to primal instincts, enabling him to subvert true conservative values by driving up the national debt with a corporate tax cut. El Paso, Texas say they're responding to an active shooter. It is an invasion, you know that. I say invasion, they say, isn't that terrible? The letter states this attack is in response to the Hispanic invasion of Texas. They are the instigators, he wrote, not me. I'm simply defending my country from cultural and ethnic replacement brought on by an invasion. Yes. We've had a rise in hate crimes every single one of the last three years during an administration where you have a president who's called Mexicans rapists and criminals. Though Mexican immigrants commit crimes at a far lower rate than those born here in the country, he has tried to make us afraid of them. We've had the FBI director repeatedly testify that the white supremacist, white nationalist threat uh, is now much more frequent and, uh, and, and likely to occur in this country and, and manifest itself in the form of terrorism than any other form of extremism. We now know what they did in response to that massacre is that the president's campaign affirmed that, in fact, they're still going to leave up their millions of dollars worth of Facebook ads that rail about an invasion of immigrants at the border, just like the El Paso shooters diatribe said. I gotta ask you a question. I do not uh, believe in, I can't trust Obama. I, I have read about him and he's not, he's not, he's a, um, he's an Arab. He is not. No ma'am. No? No ma'am. No ma'am. No ma he's a, he's a, he's a decent family man, citizen that I just happen to have disagreements with on, on fundamental issues. And that's what this campaign is all about. He's not. Thank you. Happy birthday. Jody's first three years were textbook normal. Happy birthday, dear Jody. Happy then, about six weeks after her third birthday, a storm of epileptic seizures took control of her brain. Jody would lose almost all of her right hemisphere, and the cavity would fill with cerebrospinal fluid. What we're looking at here is an image, an MRI, that was done on Jody after her surgery. And what it shows us is the fact that we in removed her entire right hemisphere. But how could Jody function normally with only one hemisphere? It's because of a miraculous ability of the brain called plasticity. Our brains can actually change shape creating new connections between neurons or brain cells to replace lost or damaged ones. Jody's left brain started reconnecting almost immediately. Everything you encounter and everything you experience is changing your brain. And that can be for better, but it can also be for worse. So when you leave today, go out and build the brain you want. It's safer to pick the best ideas from both sides. Although you may take some flack, as I did, 
Chapman teaming up with Jordan Peterson to argue against political correctness. I've been given huge grief already simply because I'm standing here next to Professor Peterson, which is the very reason that I am standing here in the first place. I'm standing next to someone with whom I have, you know, differences, shall we say, in terms of politics and all kinds of other things, um, precisely because I think all this has got to stop. This rage, resentment, hostility, hostility intolerance, above all this um, with us or against us, certainty. The Grand Canyon has opened up in our world, the fissure, the crack grows wider every day. I think it's time for this toxic, binary, zero-sum madness to stop before we destroy ourselves. And I would like this quotation from my hero Bertrand Russell to hover over the evening. One of the painful things about our time is that those who feel certainty are stupid, and those with any imagination and understanding are filled with doubt and indecision. Let doubt prevail. Now, I'm wondering if you can change my mind about something. The best democratic candidate. I think it might be Elizabeth Warren, but I'm not sure. Head over to changeofview.com, which supported this video. And if you can change my view, I'll thank you in a future video.